Sweet. Well, uh, welcome everybody to the final crit of the PNG FFRG National Project, where we are tackling the uh, increased recycling of plastic film across the country. Uh, we're entering the build and test crit, so we're going to uh, see everybody's uh, prototypes that they built, uh, about the concepts that they created in ideation uh, at the last huddle, and uh, how you were able to create tests effective user tests to learn and gain insights about those prototypes and the concepts that you created. So for this presentation, we will have uh, four minutes for each of the uh, teams to present their um, presentations, followed by five minutes of feedback. Uh, this feedback is going to be primarily from Aileen and uh, Helen of PNG, so that we can uh, really focus on narrowing down to one single concept uh, to present and I think Sher the final Sherry's article. joining. As well. Oh, perfect. I see Sherry on the, yeah, so we'll have her as well. Okay, Sherry is going to virtually appear in a moment. Um, uh, so we are really looking forward to the final presentation in a few weeks. And uh, next week we will have the expo prep calls one-on-one -on -one with DFA National and each of the teams. For that, you will be putting together a full draft of your presentation to present to us so we can provide feedback uh, based on um, how you're presenting, so you're all ready to go when you enter the final expo in a few weeks. Um, do, 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 do. Be sure for that to tell the user's journey and not your uh, team journey, so really focus on the stakeholder and the personas that you're creating so that everyone can understand what they're doing and how your concepts will help and improve them to recycle uh, plastic film. Um, and again, we're going to be narrowing down to one idea in this uh, uh, phase. So. Uh, implement those feedback, set up some more user tests in the next coming weeks, and uh, get ready to go to Cincinnati. So we have first up Crew CIA. So if you would like Aaron uh, to queue up your presentation, you have four minutes. Maybe. Um. So. First, we're gonna talk about. Wait, is this presenting? No, uh, we can't see it yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Cool. Um, so first, we're gonna talk about what we've done in like the last couple of weeks. Yeah. So um, we have interviewed eleven mall stores, and from that. Um, we got the number that 82% reported having a large portion of items packaged in film. So that kind of indicates to us that yes, there is a potential for a collection there. Um, and then in addition, we surveyed some um, retail employees on campus and found that 75% um, would say that they would not have previously been able to correctly identify plastic film. So that highlights to us the importance of effective education. Um, so the three, the three tests, I think there were four actually, that we came up with is the first one, um, we wanted to decide like if there was actual interest in plastic film recycling in businesses. Um, so we just surveyed a bunch of um, individual stores, both in malls and just kind of individual stores. And what we got from that is that there are a lot of people who like say that they're actively interested, but it's a lot more difficult to um, get people to actually participate, especially if their like recycling policies are handled by corporate. Um, but we did get two um, stores to like agree to actually start prototyping with us, and that would be Luna Bakery uh, and our university bookstore. Let's see, yeah. Our second test was... Um, Two minutes. Is, oh, shoot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so our second test is like whether or not training increases increases proper recycling. Um, so what we want to do is um, give a before and after quiz about like how much do they know about plastic film recycling. The third test is if like the signage that currently exists can be made more effective. Um, so th these are the signs that we currently see around our campus um, and they have like a lot of information on it and it's honestly like pretty difficult. Like it's easier to throw away stuff. So what we want to do is compare like if the, the current plastic film signage um, is effective enough or if we can make it more easy to read for people by only including the things that are relevant to them. Um, so in Luna Bakery it would be, you know, like plastic sleeves and things like that. And then bookstore would be more like that plastic 
packaging that you would get on like notebook paper. Um, our fourth test is like, does bin placement matter? Um, our key assumption here is that the rate of recycling is negatively affected um, if the bins are kind of far, far away from where you're working with the plastic. Um, okay, and so we haven't started implementing yet is the thing. We're going to start like next week, uh, which is why we don't have any like results from the data yet. Um, but like Luna Bakery and the bookstore have agreed and we just need to like start putting the bins in place. And in the next two weeks, we're going to um, see our results. Great, thank you. Uh, Helen, Eileen, do you have any starting comments? Who wants to go first? <laughs> um, I will. I, I'll, I will do it. it this is Aileen. Um, it's, it, I wish you had had some time to, to get feedback on these because it, it would make it a little bit easier to give you guidance on, on um, direction from here. But just based on what, what you're um, prototyping, um, it, it seems to me that, that the, the places that, um, since you're, that the, that, the, that the best places maybe to focus would be on um, training and bin location because those those seem to go together to me and and be part of the work flow um, and and it would maybe you know it, it's possible that it's possible that all these things can go together I mean signage might be a part of that training but um, I think you really want to focus on what it is you're trying to accomplish are you trying to incorporate um, recycling of plastic film into the work day for these people and, and if that's that's the goal here then what is the most effective prototype you could use to make that happen yeah I think building what uh, what Aline said um, I like that you're, you're trying out some different routes I do think they kind of all hang together um, so they're different elements that will come together be, be interesting to see for the, um, you know, what are you going to measure? How are you going to know whether or not you've been successful? You know, do you have some pretest where you look and see how full the bin gets and does it get the right right stuff in it or not versus post? You know, how are you going to know um, that you've achieved it? Um, so that was one thing. And then the other comment I had, which was actually based on your deck from last time that I looked through, um, I was interested to see you have one idea that was like with a built-in decontamination. It was one of your brainstorm ideas, and I was, I was intrigued by that because I wondered, you know, how much of the issue is not just um, stuff not getting recycled or put in the proper bins, but you know that it's dirty and can't actually be recycled. So I'm interested to hear, you know, did you you obviously decided not to pursue that, and what was the rationale behind that? Um, so. We just figured that looking at like f things that dealt with food was a lot of work. We talked to some recycling companies and they told us that like that was the most difficult like thing to recycle. Like most of it would just be thrown out anyway because it was so dirty. Like they have a separate, okay. um, yeah. But the stuff you're doing with the bakery, then, that's not actually films that are in contact with food, then. Is that films from raw materials and things they're getting in around boxes? Yeah, yeah. Most of it is, like, the packaging material. It's not dealing with the front end. Mm -hmm. Jerry, do you have any okay. comments? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Jerry. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Um, I kind of echo what, what has been stated. One of the things, though, that intrigued me, uh, was there a comment about uh, difficulty in getting management to engage? Was was that one of the things I thought I saw on your slides? Yeah. <laughs> I'd <laughs> like to, yeah, because that's something we've experienced in real time. Mm -hmm. So I would like some additional thoughts or thinking around, okay. oh, you might do a better job of getting them engaged. We know from the retail perspective, anything that their customers value, retailers are interested in. So I would like to, you know, some more thinking around or 
uh, research around what would better incentivize management to get engaged in these types of programs. Great. Thank you. Uh, next up is RPI. So, Juliana, could you queue up, please? Yep, sounds good. Okay. Can you see my screen? You're on deck. Yep. Yeah, we can see Okay. It. Awesome. Uh, so within the past couple of weeks, we worked on building and testing. We didn't get to testing for all of our prototype directions, um, but we kind of came up with a plan that is going to come in the future for testing those ideas. Um, so the first thing I'll be talking about is our plastic film logo. The last time we identified that there needs to be some sort of identifiable um, film logo specifically. Um, so we took this idea and started playing around with colors and shape, um, and we really wanted to keep it as close to the recycling logo as possible, just so it's, you know, because it's already established and people know what it means, um, but including a different color, such as purple, um, and the words PF um, as plastic film, um, just so that if the logo were in black and white, it could also be distinguished as plastic film. Um, so we haven't actually uh, gone and tested this prototype yet, but we will be testing it through survey questions, um, doing a bunch of printouts of the logo, asking people what they think. Um, we're also talking with the recycling coordinator of Troy next week on Wednesday. Um, also, we could do a test uh, called like the seven step Paul Rand logo test in which we can tell like um, if it's effective through like simplicity and other things like that. Um, the second idea we had was the in-home kitchen bin. Um, this is an attachable, attachable to your current recycling bin, and it comes in two parts. Um, one is the permanent bin, and one is the portable bag insert that goes in, inside it. So the whole idea is that people would put their plastic film in it, and then when they're done, take the portable insert out, um, go to the grocery store, empty it out, and then use that insert for their, um, their uh, goods at the store. Um, so... We tested this with a couple of people in our community that live on off-campus off houses. Um, so they go to the grocery store a couple times a week, um, things like that. And we got some initial feedback from the test. Um, the stake, stakeholders that we had used these in their homes said that they found out that they were consciously thinking about the things that they were throwing in the garbage versus single stream recycling. Um, they also kind of realized that sometimes they were confused as to what was plastic film, so they just kind of didn't know where to throw it. Um, but it seemed to be seem it seemed to work effortlessly with the systems that are already in place because you know normally you kind of just throw things out and have these bins, so it doesn't it didn't provide like an extra inconvenience um, and it wasn't unobtrusive. The third thing we did was the redesign of the grocery store bin. Um, so we talked about having this be some sort of um, thing that you can deposit your plastic film and kind of get um, get like a coupon or something from the store. Um, since we can't actually like design this, we kind of like simplified the de design to be more of like a gear system where you'd put your plastic film in and then you do a crank and you'd crank all the plastic film to the bottom. Um, and so we haven't started testing this because we're still in the build phase of this prototype. But we did do a different prototype to test. Um, but for this one, when it is built, we'll be talking to store managers and put it in the stores um, and kind of see who who interacts with it. But the test that we did do was we created a simplified um, just recyc collection recycling bin, um, and we put it in three different locations like across campus, and we collected over 400 plastic film items over the past week. Um, and we kind of figured out that students wanted a recycler plastic film but didn't have a place to do it, um, and that the location of these bins actually did matter. Um, the fourth idea was a plastic film keychain holder, uh, which we kind of just came up with some initial concepts for. Um, basically, the idea is that you would shove your plastic film into it, and then you'd be able to remove the, the top of it um, to throw your plastic film out. Um, and we were testing this assumption by giving it to a bunch of people on campus. Um, similarly to the in-home plastic bin um, idea um, and getting feedback from that. And then kind of this fifth um, edition design direction, which we didn't talk about last time, but we kind of wanted to include. Um, we kind of saw uh, there was a lack of awareness throughout Troy 
And so we wanted to create this idea called a community pavilion where people can come up and weave their plastic bags into um, more of like an awareness type um, solution. Uh, so this pavilion is going to be tested at the farmer's market where we can ask people what they think about it and kind of see who interacts with it um, just on a normal basis. Awesome. Thank you for that, Helen, or uh, PNG, Sherry. Yeah. Yeah, let, let me start this time. Um, I like the, the range of ideas that you've tested. Also, like that you're looking at both the store and the community and the home and different touch points. Um, I, I think that's great, great breadth. Um, one question I had for you on the, the keychain. I mean, first of all, I love that it's a little turtle. It's a, <laughs> a neat touch. Um, but do you have an idea of how much plastic waste an individual collects in a week or in a certain amount of time to throw away, you know, even just from observing yourselves, um, you know, for the, the plastic bag holder, but also for the size of your bin that you use at home, do you have an idea of what size that would be to be viable? Uh, that's actually something that we're testing through this. Um, we yesterday 3D printed some um, different sizes of this kind of like different variations of this plastic bag holder um, and we kind of just want to hand them out to people and see like if they if they use it at all um, if they do use it do they find themselves running out of space um, you know like th things like that especially dealing with space um, it's not going to be a replacement for like a normal plastic bin holder uh, like one that you find in your home but at least it could be something that like you know as you're going through your day to day on the go yeah, yeah. okay yeah. Uh, as we continue to give feedback, a lot of uh, teams are in a similar place where there's a lot of ideas right now, which I think is great for initial testing. But in three weeks' time, we need to be narrowed down to one idea, right? So if you guys have any thoughts, one idea per team. Uh, so if you guys have any thoughts on directions that the teams could narrow down to, I think that would be awesome. Um, Ke my feedback, Kelly, when, when uh, you when you say one one idea, I mean I'm I'm struck by this. Is it the need for an ecosystem of ideas at different places, right? Press to say what's more important at home or in the store or on the go or in the community. So, how should the teams be thinking about that? About proposing maybe an ecosystem of ideas versus having one single idea. Mm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, I think uh, typically we have done a single idea because it's easiest to prototype different uh, different aspects of that idea to really hone in on getting great feedback about one idea. And the idea of this ecosystem of ideas usually comes from uh, the the group as a whole. Each team. Uh, typically narrows down to um, a different aspect and the, the group as a whole is sort of presenting an ecosystem. Um, okay. But if you would prefer to sort of keep that ecosystem within each team and still have a couple of ideas presented at the final expo, I think that's feasible as well. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's a question of, you know, what what's possible in the time. I mean, I, I wouldn't like to lose the thinking of the ecosystem because I think they've put a lot of thought as to how they all fit together within yeah. one team, but I understand that there's not enough time to go prototype everything. So what I just ask is that they keep that conceptual idea of the ecosystem and present that, and maybe you just have one of the ideas that you prototype and test and, and spend the time on to bring to the expo, for example. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because yeah, I think I that's what we're struggling with a lot, is that we, we do see these working like all in tandem together um, in this like cycle or ecosystem. Um, so it's kind of like hard to get rid of one of them when you just want them to kind of fit in the same place, right? Yeah. Uh, this is Sherry. One amplification I would suggest to, um, is it the bag insert you had? I think it's a couple of slides back. Yeah. That one. That, yeah, just pass. Yeah. Um, on the bag itself, it could be helpful either if you had an insert where you could put a card in that shows the different types of material that go into that bag. Uh, we have a refrigerator magnet with those images on it, so it makes it easier for folks to know what to put in a bag that they're going to take back to a store for recycling. Or maybe the bag itself could be uh, produced with those images on it. 
and look more like a, it seems like it could be uh, more like a reusable bag, but the images would be imprinted on the bag or either there'd be an insert so it's easy for folks to remember what to put in in the bag itself. Thank you. Um, I am going to I'm going to focus a little on the narrowing down. I do love the idea of of presenting some of the ideas that, um, as Helen said, that, that create an ecosystem. But of then just narrowing it down to one thing that you're prototyping. So the things that I would maybe not focus on prototyping, but would love to still see presented as things that you considered. Well, one is that that community pavilion idea. I love the idea a lot. I'm not. I think it's probably not. It's it's great in terms of promoting awareness, um, but possibly it just as a functional day to day thing, not as effective as some of your other ideas. I think if you're going to cut one out that you don't need to spend a lot of time prototyping, it would be that keychain holder. I think people mostly interact with plastic at home or at work, mm -hmm. where they might have a bin if you're going to provide that. And people like to put their key keys in their pockets, so a big thing attached to a keychain. Um, I'm not sure how many people would want that. I think that the also the the bin idea in the store is is a, or that you put places around, and also yay architects for contributing the most bags. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think that to do the gear thing is gonna it, that you know the more parts you have, the easier it is for something to go wrong. And that seems like something that would appeal more to kids than to adults to turn gear. Um, so I would maybe not, if it were me, I wouldn't focus on that. I think that the bag in the bin attached to the existing recycling is genius. And it looks like your users really liked it a lot. Yeah. So that that is one I would focus on. And then, <laughs> finally, the logo idea I love because it would, if you could get people to adopt this, it would take the guesswork out of recycling for the consumer. And that's what we're really looking for here. That that would solve a lot of issues. Um, I think that the one of those top two logos are the best because they're already recognizable as a recycling symbol. That symbol is not copyrighted. I looked. Mm -hmm. um, so you can use it. <laughs> and and I think that the the third one where the arrows are changed would cause more confusion. But I, I just think that if you could get um, companies to adapt those, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a, a big thing, if, uh, if the team is still or in this stage where there's this ecosystem of ideas, I think we need to work on crafting what the story of that ecosystem is, what makes yeah. Yeah. each yeah. of these different elements part of the story of the ecosystem. Um, and I do want to emphasize for the teams, focus on uh, although it is an ecosystem, really think about how you can hone in on one or two of the ideas to test as sort of a sort of like a sampling or a case study in mm -hmm. how you would go about testing the rest of yeah. the ideas to the ecosystem and presenting this is, you know, this is a core element of this idea is a core element of our ecosystem. Um, and here's how we tested it. And here's the feedback that we got. And here's how we would iterate on this one, as well as the rest of the items in the ecosystem, given the opportunity to move forward with it. Right. That's I think that makes sense. I, I, could, I could imagine a, a journey map that then would talk about the ecosystem and which touch points, which things play into. And then, then as you say, just have one that you really prototype and flesh out as the full idea. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, Texas State, you're up. All right, thank you. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, yes. Uh, let me start from the beginning. Uh, let's see, present. Okay, so uh, we have four concepts from the past uh, time that we have a check in. Um, so we kind of create a journey map to see how the user interact with uh, the system or the program that we have. Uh, so we kind of map out different interaction between uh, three different type of user that may be part of our programs. So um, the first one is uh, the plastic uh, recycling bin that they can use at their home and also kind of carry the job up at the store. Uh, the second system is that can be used for community organizers so they can set up a stations and so that people can pick it up um, a recycling bin and take home with them. Um, and also like online toolkit, people can like download their tablet 
share the material and uh, kind of a DIY kit they can build a plastic film at home from like maybe a, a cardboard box that they have at home or from a pizza box and then stuff. Uh, so we realized that the first concept is See you cut out. You still there? See, we can't hear you anymore. Hmm. Hmm. See you there? We can just give to you to come back. Um, yeah, T, you might want to, um, rejoin the call. It might be, I think you might just be frozen. Uh, your internet may have cut out. Um, so we are going to go ahead and, um, oh, she's rejoining. Oh, I think I got cut off. Yeah. Okay. We can hear Let you me now. share, let me share screen again. Sorry. Uh, we can still see the screen. Uh, oh, okay. Let me, uh, okay, this is, uh, there we go. Um, okay, so uh, Project's milestone that we are thinking about. Um, so right now we do prototype building and testing. Um, the next step we're going to do, like, do iteration and second round of testing and productions. Um, we talk about building an online learning lab tool from, uh, online learning platform on, so that this is going to be an onboarding site, um, and we're going to test it after um, and then next, we want to looking for sponsorship to kind of reproduce those uh, products, or and then we're gonna go to launching. So uh, in the past week, uh, we kind of build, oops, we built three different types of trash bin to test on the usability of products, the size, material, shape, different feature, and also the information system, uh, the name of the trash bin, information on. Um, on plastic film recycling instructions, and if they will be uh, interested in using the product. Uh, so the first uh, prototype, it, we test with five different students, and um, you know portability is uh, important. So we make it like um, small, maybe five by seven uh, in dimensions, um, and then uh, we have like uh, a mouth on the top so they can stuff in the plastic bag. On the side, we have die cut. Uh, but we try to like implement like the measurement on the side, so like if they put how many bags in that, that kind of eliminate the amount of plastic bag they remove from the landfill. We also Minute test the label. Oh, we test the label system. Um, we tell them like build a bin, collect plastic film, and drop up grocery store, and also put a, the label system in the back as well. So like present the life cycle of plastic film. What if they being thrown in the landfill, and what if they uh, they throw in the right recycling bins? Uh, so we just give the they give them a survey so they can answer and we ask follow-up questions. Uh, they think the diagram in the back is really helpful to how to understand uh, what they impact into the environment. Um, they would mostly use it a push bin to attach on the wall, and they see two die cut on both sides are confusing and overdone. Um, the trash can number two and number three, we do A-B testing and kind of do observational research as well. So we, um, we get with a new user and we just hand it out the prototype and we observe them to see how to interact and they would tell us um, what to think about a product, what it's used for. Um, and we use uh, two different material, a canvas, and then more sometimes like soft material. Uh, the foldable board can lay really flat and it can be um, an object and easy to use too. Um, the feedback uh, we got from them, it may be first soft uh, fabric because for its portability and easy to compress. They like the bungee core that help them to hang it over the regular trash bin on the size of uh, the cabinet. Um, um, and they would love to be decorated old plastic bag as well. Um, they suggest the size can be bigger, but then they're happy with the size of it because they say they can put in their backpack. Um, they usually look at the back label first before the front label. Um, the most confusing term, we kind of read out loud different plastic film items and to see if they recognize it, know what it is. Uh, the most confusing terms are the case wrap and snack pack over wrap. Um, so the key takeaway is people don't read, and then people don't recognize unconventional shape objects. So that kind of help us to decide what we're going to uh, prototype, uh, iterate our product for the next step. Um, we're going to think about the language, uh, since people are not sure what the object is, even though after reading information on the back, so we need to be more direct on what we ask them to do. Um, and we need to add the recycling icon to, with the description below each icon on the side of the box to see which one they can put in there. Um, 
So people usually interact with object based on the assumption before actually reading information. So the next step we're going to test is A-B testing on the shape of the bins and then remove any feature that's not important. Um, we think about material, which is something uh, lightweight, uh, compostable for indoor use, and also maybe cardboard, Tyvex, or canvas, especially material made from recyclables. Um, and the volume, uh, we kind of do some research on like um, for one pound of 16 ounces, we can store 26 plastic bags, but some of the plastic wrap can be heavier and bulkier. So we may think about like making a box maybe 18 hours, 20 or 24 hours. So the next step is just iterate and do a second round of testing and production. We need more validation on the user before we can actually uh, connect with a community organizer like RA to get this pilot program running to measure our adoption rate. Um, we're going to build onboarding site and uh, test them with the users as well. Um, and this is going to be on board for new user and, you know, curate our future programs at Plastic Film Community Challenge. Uh, next thing, we kind of look for sponsorship. See, we have, like, a blank size on a plastic bin. We're thinking about, like, grocery store that have plastic film drop off would likely to adopt. Um, so we, and we may send a, we still in touch with HEB, so we hopefully to send them a proposal uh, at the end of the, the, the testing, um, and we have to use the template as the packaging, you know, products, maybe T-shirts, sleeping pad, blankets, so that the consumer can they reuse the package after they use the products. Um, and then next step is launching. Um, think about marketing and how we reach our audience, and especially office administrators, like people that um, have a community so they can just start their own program in the office and uh, an online sustainability program um, as well. Uh, I think that that is what I have for today. Check in. Great. Okay. Uh, uh, PNG, uh, Sherry, Eileen, anything? Um, may, this is Sherry. I may have missed something in the, the process here. Um, the term plastic trash bag, I was a little struck by. Um, what is this a collection mechanism for film or? I, I I I may have as I said I may have missed something earlier on, but I'm kind of lost in that concept of a oh, trash it's, bag. Uh, it's, oh, I mean a plastic trash film bin. trash bin. It's just for plastic film. For that plastic film. Is it to collect it for recycling? Yes. Okay, that that term trash then will lose some folks oh, yeah. because. <laughs> I, I was, that's not what I got from. I think a, a plastic film bin maybe. Call out recycling, uh, you know. Yeah, oh. it, it, I think it, it loses it. Yes, thank you. Some clarity around what this is and what it's for by framing it as a as a trash mm -hmm. bin. So, yeah, I, I think that's an important point though because what you call it could be a very important mm -hmm. part of what the it design is, is. Yes, in terms of reframing. Yeah, yeah, both in terms of you know what people currently associate with that. Yep. And in terms of maybe creating a new habit and a new thing that you give it some kind of new name that's familiar enough, but says, you know, this isn't just for your regular trash. This is a, you know, plastic film collection device yeah. of some kind. Yeah. Um, I, I had a question as well. I'm not sure I understood the comment about a template and it can be turned into a T-shirt. Uh, can you could you explain that again, please? Yeah, because I'm thinking like uh, if we looking for adoptions, maybe you know, t-shirt company can put the t-shirts in the box and then ship them, and then they can reuse the, ah, box, okay. the packaging for the trash bins. So it's like a new system. Like if you buy like snack or something, that in, instead of shipping in like a box, we can ship in like this size of uh, the size, a new color, new template, a new size. Maybe Amazon can use it at their uh, packaging box instead of uh, the regular uh, containers. Interesting, because we've separately been working on a project thinking of e-commerce secondary shipping and how can you repurpose it. Um, but I think you need to work out how you'd link that back to the plastic pa packaging, but that's an interesting idea. This is Aileen. I, uh, yeah. I think um, based on the feedback that you got, it, it looked like of the two things, the two types of recycling bins that you prototyped, um, the 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 fabric ones seem to work better for people. They didn't, I, I, I did really like the idea of build your impact as you're building that box. I thought that was a, a great idea. Um, you have an, a typo on impact. You probably saw that, but yeah, the, uh, oh. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, the impact is actually the name of the box. So we kind of undecided about it. We call like the bin is the impact box. Just like in is like within community yeah. and then create impact. 
I think people are going to. But think we need to work on that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but um, <laughs> watch it. But but that said, I felt like the um, the fabric one people seemed to take to pretty pretty well, and that the idea of getting a sponsor who would be willing to print those for you to make them out of recycled plastic bags um, to have their their sponsorship on those bags as something that lasts and people use is a pretty cool idea. And I wonder if any of the partners of the um, Flexible Film Recycling Organization have, group would have uh, somebody who would be interested in that. Well, actually, that exists already. We call them our bag sleeves. Trex produces those. There are other manufacturers of those sleeves. And the idea is to put your films in those bags, either to reuse them around your home, those that are you know appropriate for that, or to collect them, to return them to the grocery stores. But it's a great bag for messaging, for reminders, for holding, uh, again, the material until it's either reused or returned to a store for recycling. Does so. Trek make those and ship their product in them, or do they just make those as an no. independent thing? In, independent. They're mainly as giveaways at events that are promoting oh. film recycling and, and take-back programs. Those are one of the giveaways that are usually provided at those events. Great. Okay, we need to move on to Purdue. Uh, they were are unable to attend right. the call, but they created right. Thank a you. video. Thanks, T. Thank um, you. So Kelly will be sharing Purdue's video, and then again, uh, we'll be providing feedback. All right, let me know if this doesn't work. See, and I'm the team lead for DFA Purdue. Our first prototype is a program slideshow. It's for a yearly education program designed for elementary school students to make them aware of recycling practices in a fun way. It utilizes monthly challenges and the opportunities to earn points for individual and school-wide prizes. We tested it with a third grade teacher and the key assumption that we were testing is that teachers would be willing to support an educational program for their students, given that the resources are provided to them. With the test, we wanted to measure out the feasibility of implementation in the classroom. The feedback we got was revolving around time and integrating it into existing class time. Our stakeholder mentioned that she wanted to know if we could incorporate different aspects of the program into school life, like art class with decorating or recycling bin or making your own designs for a musical bag. If they're doing so, a lesson could be incorporated where they could take their decorating recycling bin or reusable bag to the grocery store or at home. The budgeting aspect was taken into consideration after our stakeholder considered the feasibility. There are a lot of materials that could be required for different challenges that need to be funded by the program. The main takeaway is that this program has to be integrated with the school without disrupting regular classwork. Our second prototype is a plastic film depository system that would be displayed near the front entrance of the store in front of the produce section. It's a depository that is clear where you're able to see the amount of plastic film grocery shoppers have recycled, and it offers incentives such as coupons for one's contribution. We were able to test it with Purdue students and West Lafayette residents, and the key assumption was that people would be more likely to recycle plastic film if given an incentive and could see quantifiable results. With the test, we wanted to see how easy it was to interact and if shopper could easily understand the system. The majority of our feedback we received was more focused on the types of incentives a shopper could receive. We wanted to see a number of something saved to make it more quantifiable. They would also like to see more incentives based off of products they buy on a regular basis or getting a dollar amount off from their total amount at checkout. We incorporated a scale to measure the amount of plastic film that was being recycled, but users didn't understand the purpose of doing so, which led us to one of our main key takeaways is that there needs to be an explicit explanation of how to interact with the machine to make it easy. The incentive should also be more tailored towards the grocery shopper's profile or, or post-shopping experience. Our third and last prototype is a planning app with how to recycle icon identifiers. It includes features such as making a grocery list, looking up sales ads, locations of recycling drop-off centers, and notifications to bring back plastic film and reusable bags to the grocery store. We also incorporated a feature where users that are active recyclers can add to the database the product packaging that can be recycled, similar to Yelp and how you can rate a restaurant. We were able to test it with Purdue students and two of our users we originally interviewed during our research. We wanted to test the key assumption that people would enjoy learning about recycling, that they would partake in plastic film recycling after the information is provided to them. With the test, we wanted to see if the app was easy to, easy to understand and navigate through it. Most of the feedback we received are related to the structure of the phone application and making it more tailored to the journey of carrying out the grocery shopping process. 
Instead of having tabs to make a grocery list or search a product, having a set process format that starts with schedule your next grocery trip, then make a grocery list, and so on. The set process would be more easy to understand and navigate through. We also got a lot of feedback to make the benefit of this phone application obvious to people who aren't active recyclers to use this app. Similar to our depository concept, offering some type of incentive such as coupons would make the app more desirable. Lastly, we, lastly, we also had identifiers to easily distinguish how product packaging can be recycled, such as curbside recycling as normal or wash bag and recycle plastic film at a drop off location in your area. Most of our users like this concept because it eliminated the step of having to find out on their own, but they'd like to see icons that are different shapes and some different colors to make it easier to understand. Overall, we got a wide range of feedback that helped us understand the gaps we missed. We would like feedback from you to help narrow down our three ideas to our final concept. Our next steps is to cluster our feedback to identify common themes. We will then evaluate our concepts with our mentors to determine which idea accomplishes our end goal of increasing plastic film recycling. Thank you. All right. Great. Uh, we can type some responses and have a conversation so they can see this. Uh, who would like to begin? Okay, so they're, they're looking for us to, to help them narrow down, right, to the one lead, lead idea? Yeah. I mean, what, what I immediately jumped on was the education for kids, because I just think that's different from many of the other routes that other teams are taking. Um, mm -hmm. And I do think I've heard that as a consistent theme across teams that educating people and helping people understand about what plastic films are and how to recycle them is a big part of the overall picture. And I mm -hmm. do think getting to kids and integrating in school programs is a, is a good way of doing that. So not that their other ideas aren't good, it's just that I see some overlap between some of the other teams. So I'd, if I had to vote, I would, I'd like to see that fleshed out. I agree. I like that one. And I um, I know that we had some feedback from Sherry last time that Trex, who seems to have cornered the market on this, already has an education program um, that they do in the schools. But I still think that it's great to have grassroots things in your community. Somehow I always think when it comes from a community and parents get involved that um, that it sticks better and it becomes long term instead of a one shot deal. Um, I think that having this be part of an art class would be okay, but I really think having it be part of a science class would, would be yep. great. And if you maybe talk to a science teacher to help you develop it um, to become part of their curriculum. And even, you know, my kids went to a school where art was part of everything. So if there was even some sort of science art class crossover um, where you learn about it in science class and build it in art class, um, you know, you know that might work, but I, 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 it seems like you might have a problem with getting teachers on board here, but if you bring them in to help create it, it might help. Mm -hmm. Sherry, do you have any thoughts? I mean, I'm, I, I agree. I think it, it's a real opportunity to do more and to engage kids in um, film recycling. Uh, one of the things that has been effective in the TREX program is they make it a challenge and a competition, and they reward uh, the schools at the end of the, the period with something useful to them in the terms of a, of a bench so folks will know that their effort went into creating a product from Recycle Filmed or some, you know, other incentive like a, a party or, you know, some contribution toward a party for them or something that whatever they would find most useful. But it really incentivizes them. And I like the competition idea because it also lends to not only educating, but motivating, really motivating the kids to get involved. And they also uh, educate their, their parents about it. So I, I'm all for that. I think it's a good, you know, concept to further flesh out. And it may be uh, helpful to add something in the social media space, since that's where they live now. If there's some way to tie in a social media aspect to this education, to this competition, I think, you know, that would, you know, even right down to making a game aspect part of it, I think that could be helpful to engaging more kids in, in, the, in the process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I could see a world where those color indicators that they 
finalized on like the key takeaway three of simple, uh, colorful, different shapes of the different types of plastic could be incorporated into that competition so that it's an environment that kids are exploring and bringing back to the classroom and uh, really participating with their parents in that journey. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, Sharon, you are up next. Could you queue up your presentation, please? Uh, we're actually going to play the presentation since you guys already have it prepared, and then you will be present for the feedback, which is awesome. Perfect. Um, I am actually have to get going so I can get to class, but thank you so much for all the feedback. Okay. Thank you, Juliana. Hey guys, um, I'm Sophie, the team lead from DFA Yale, and this is our presentation for weeks five through six. Um, in terms of choosing a concept from, um, from our ideation session, we decided to choose concepts that would address directly the consumers um, of plastic film rather than the firms that use it. So for instance, grocery store shoppers rather than grocery stores. And we want to find a way to kind of nurture a culture of responsibility in consumers and to make people feel inherently motivated to recycle without material incentives. So our first concept was um, building off of one of our ideated ideas of a clear um, plastic film collection bin. So we decided to have kind of like a new eye-catching plastic film collection bin with which users could vote on questions using a plastic film, which was inspired by the ballot bin, which is currently used in the UK to, um, in which users vote on questions with their cigarettes. So for instance, you know, Messi versus Ronaldo, like people can vote on who is the better player with their cigarettes. So we decided to test um, our low fidelity cardboard model with a Yale student. And um, we decided to measure basically how effective the balloting aspect was as a stimulus for recycling more plastic film and whether the message um, was clearly communicated that people should recycle plastic film and that there are some plastic films that can be recycled and some that can't be recycled. Um, our stakeholder um, liked the idea, but also thought that um, the question, although it was fun, wouldn't really motivate her to recycle more. Um, and also it could be sensory overload to say what can be recycled and what can be recycled and have to answer questions. So you're processing um, three different kinds of information at the same time, which could discourage a good number of people. So the takeaway from this was that we need to simplify our prototype of the plastic film collection bin to remove things that are distractive and to focus on the main concept. Um, and that maybe voting itself on itself um, cannot really counteract the inconvenience associated with the recycling process. So our second concept was building off of our first concept. So we decided to keep the um, collection bin idea and just redesign it to be more simplistic, a little bit sleeker. And um, this bin would have two sections, one for recyclable plastic film and one for non-recyclable plastic film. Um, and we wanted to test whether or not this would communicate clearly the, the nature of the recycling process and that people um, and whether or not people would know what to put in the bin with like minimal written information but very substantial visual information. And um, our feedback was also pretty positive. People like the design. Um, one, uh, our interview mentioned that um, although people could be initially confused, they would like how, um, based on the design, it would really seem like the grocery store really prioritizes sustainability. But maybe the grocery store isn't the best place to put this because people usually dispose their um, plastic film at, at home. And, um, but definitely people would need more than just visual information. Um, because had we not informed this person of what plastic film was beforehand, she likely um, wouldn't have just known just by looking at what people had recycled previously um, in the past. And we should also focus on um, doing something more to communicate the environmental impacts of plastic film um, more effectively. Which leads us on to concept three. So we decided to um, build a new prototype based on the feedback we got from the previous two concepts. So we decided to have a plastic film, um, clear plastic film collection bin with an image of a seagull and a very informative headboard denoting the acceptable and unacceptable types of plastic film that can be included along with a QR code that people can scan and uh, maybe via a website online confirm that this plastic film um, collection center was still valid. I know that when we went to conduct some of our interviews, we actually couldn't find um, a still extant plastic film collection bin. Um, the one that we went to at Walmart, for instance, like it hadn't, no one who worked at Walmart knew where it was. So maybe by having a QR code that people can scan and confirm the location of, this could mobilize the community a little bit more. So um, our concept was to kind of wanted to test whether or not if we incorporated a 
reminder of the negative environmental effects of plastic film, we could like inherently increase the motivation that people had. And we wanted to measure how effective the image and concept were in conveying environmental damages and how clear the information on our headboard was. Um, and here you can see like here is where you would put the information about what is recyclable and here is like what would not be recyclable. So in the end, um, the people really liked the QR code concept. They really thought that it could publicize um, the plastic film recycling process in more communities. Um, the, the visual and textual information on the sign was pretty clear, but there wasn't any information about what plastic film was, and that's something that we really need to um, uh, give the uh, denotation of. And our stakeholder um, also really liked the concept, but it also looked like we were feeding the seagull plastic, which isn't the way we want to frame um, the issue. We want to make it look like we're rescuing the seagull from the plastic instead. So the takeaway is that we need to redesign our bin to synchronize the process a little bit more. Um, and we need to maybe keep the QR code, but also communicate um, not only the kinds of plastic film a person could recycle, but also just what plastic film is. And for next steps, we want to um, do a little bit more testing and a little bit more building based off of the um, feedback that we got. Just iterate um, the, the prototyping process. Thank you so much. Yeah, so I'm basically here to um, answer any questions you guys might have. Cool. Questions, thoughts? Um, this is Aileen. I, I like the way that you built on your first prototype through to your third prototype. It was great to see that process. Um, and I think that um, it's true that it looked like you were feeding the bird, which is unfortunate. I, I feel like you might have, even though I love the idea of making it sort of cute and fun and graphic, it I and I don't like to go necessarily the route of the Humane Society commercial when you see the sad dog. Um, it, it might be more helpful to see an, a photo of an animal that's been adversely impacted by a plastic film um, mm -hmm. as, as your motivation, because people tend to see that and think, okay, I don't want that to happen, you know, something that kind of, yeah. but um, aside from that, I, I, I thought that, that what you were doing was great. The idea of having something they can scan that gives them more information is a really good idea. Mm -hmm. um, and I think the prototype didn't have um, as it as it didn't have right at that point pictures of the objects that could be recycled, like bags and stuff. But I think had you had that, it would have given people the information that they needed. You know, they yeah, that's basically what we're like looking for. So like basically like green circles that shows you like what we do want in the bin, and then like red circles with like a cross through it showing like what yeah. we don't want here. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is Sherry. A, a couple of thoughts on that. That's one of the things that we find is key on those bins, is, and we do have signage and work with the recyclers on the signage. We have images of what goes in the bin, so it's easy for the consumer to see, ah, this is, this what, this is what goes here, and uh, this is how it should be, i.e. clean and dry. Uh, um, in terms of the images, another thing that we found is better to have a pause. I hear where you're coming from on the impact of uh, film when it becomes waste, but I think uh, it, it would be more incentivizing if you had something positive, like uh, an image of what that recycled film becomes. It could be a picture of um, a decking because, again, the major recycler is, is, is Trex, so it's not a deck. Park, park benches or something, uh, the uh, Anirondacks chairs or something that consumers uh, can relate to in a positive way. And they know that taking that material, putting it in that bin is going to result in something positive as an outcome. They are more, we have some research to show they are more motivated to, more motivated, more motivated to recycle if they see the results of their actions. So I would encourage something more positive along those lines in terms of the bin signage. I like the concept of the bin, but and there are always things you can do to improve them. I like the simplified look of it, but in terms of adding images or what the the outcome of the recycling can, can result in in terms of uh, new products, because that's another thing we need is more you know products that can be produced from recycled film, I think would be two uh, positive additions to the bin. Do you think that adding all those pictures um, would maybe clutter up the info board a bit? 
because uh, you did say that you it, it 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 depends on how it depends on how it's done. Some folks will do it in a circular fashion, so your eyes will follow in a circle, but you you get the visuals of what goes in. We did not want to include numbers because people get confused by those numbers. So we we mm -hmm. trying to move away from numbers and just go directly to images, something people can easily see and understand. And and you don't it doesn't have to be all inclusive. Maybe you can, you know, include more of the prominent images within a grocery store uh, because, you know, other images would be like shipping pills and things of that nature. But if you want to simplify it to just like bread bags and case wrap and, and things they would, and over, product overwrap, things they would normally see in a grocery store, and then, you know, somewhere I have additional information about, you know, where they can find more images, that could be an approach as well. I hear what you're saying about the, the, the cluttering and that that can be a disincentive, but still, I think it's better to inform them in terms of images as opposed to numbers to help avoid the confusion around what to put in the bin for recycling. Do you have to have like a document or something of um, what you just have to take away that you've learned from all these like potential signages that you have put up, um, like with the numbers and like the social things? Like that all sounds really helpful. I'm sorry, can you repeat you that? It's a little hard to hear you. Yeah, Sharon, I yeah. think. Yeah, oh, sorry. Should... I'm sorry, what? I did not catch that. I could that. not hear you. Yeah, <laughs> you a little hard. Can you repeat that? Oh, yes, of course. Um, so do you happen to have maybe like a document or some kind that kind of shows all these like key takeaways that you um, got from um, like learning what you have learned from like past um, info boards sure. and like signage? Sure. That'd be amazing. Sure. Yeah, definitely send that along. Yeah. Thank you so much. Sweet. Well, that, that is about time. Uh, we'll stay on the line if any of our reviewers uh, uh, or partners have uh, time and want to give more feedback to Yale or any other team or if anyone has questions. Uh, we appreciate, uh, for all the students, we appreciate all of your time um, and effort on this call. There are so many amazing ideas and feedback um, and we'll be in touch to discuss um, how, uh, what, what kind of outcomes um, and deliverables we're looking for on those one-on-one -on -one calls next week uh, before Thanksgiving uh, to get prepped for the expo and get your presentations together. Thank you guys. Great. Thank you all.